Good afternoon, this is Julie J. Auto Trading Strategies, and I am very pleased to bring you the linear regression bands um, Bloodhound template. I've got it working in Blackbird. Um, we'll have to use minute charts to trade with it. I tried testing it on a Unirico, and it just isn't working correctly. Um, it approximates the trades and it's just off. Uh, it's not exact. So uh, it has to be exact. So I, I put in an order ticket for Jeremy for an enhancement to allow us to get a selection on our um, market entry ticket, order ticket, to select the data. Um, type so if we wanted to select a separate bloodhound signal like for instance if we wanted to trade the high low one template uh, on a 714 unirinko that we could select that here and that way we would have our higher time frame trend condition and we could put this on a 60 minute or a three minute like i have and um but otherwise um just using the standard um um, settings two times ATR, one time point five times ATR, and um, see if we can get this working in Blackbird, and it seems to be working fine uh, as far as executing the orders. So I will close this. It seems to be working, and um, pause the simulated data feed. Let me show you the template. Um, I, again, let me put this on a 60 minute to start showing you. I'm very excited about this template. Um, I think it's my best template to date. That's how excited I am about it. Um, I know I don't sound excited, but I never do. <laughs> I'm sort of like on neutral, um, but extremely excited for this template. The um, premise is, is that linear regression will trend um, and it's faster than your moving averages that lag. And we'll show you this and how I've got it set up with these bands. So I've got um, bands on the bottom, uh, the, starting from the 168, 95, 68, and then 34. Um, let me take Blackbird off the chart so that you can see this. Um, the one thing about all these bands is you always fight with adjusting them, but they're well worth it once you see what I've done. So again, you've got the 34, um, this was an order, <laughs> the 168, 95, 68, and 34. And then I've listed um, all of them here. So if you wanted to see what the 168 looks like, for instance, that's the bottom row, showing you that the trend is down during this time period. So that helps you make your selection. So if you get to the top of your channel, for instance, in a downtrend, what are you going to do? You'll probably execute a sell order up there. Um, but if you wanted to see when the trending condition starts, that's when all four bands run together. And this is more or less like showing you that the algos are running because all four are aligned at the same time meaning that there's going to be uh, an opportunity for that down thrust or up thrust. So it replaces volume. I don't have volume. I don't have moving averages. I don't have momentum. The only thing I have on here is Heike and Ashi. And that separates the, um, the bars if you wanted to trade the 168 Heiken Ashi, for instance, on a three minute, like I was doing, um, works out pretty good, or trade them all. Um, the higher 
you get uh, in size, you can bring this down to like a 34 or a 68 and it will show you pretty much um, like bar direction. But for overall trend, you want to stick to one of your higher uh, periods and that'll give you the idea that, you know, it's still not trending down yet until it's printing down. But you can see what's going on with the um, bands. So you're waiting, like right here we know on the bottom band that we're in an uptrend. So we're waiting for these other bands to get green to, to signal us that it's going to start taking off again. Isn't that cool? This is just the best template. Look at that. I mean, check it out. Again, like I said, no moving average, no momentum, no anything, just straight linear regression. So I have to thank Aaron Fifield so much for turning me onto this concept. Um, and again, you can put this on a 15 minute chart, a 30 minute chart, a five minute chart. I wouldn't use a one minute. I've already looked at the one minute. It's too noisy, uh, not much value. A uh, five minute as low as I would go. Um, but again, you know, you're still not getting much value out of a five minute. So it's just too damn noisy um, to get the value out of what you're doing and using it for, figuring out when to engage a market versus when not to uh, stick to your higher time frames. And when you put this together with weekly daily 6015 and you understand my concept of these bands, you see how far apart the bands are. Um, it's just, you know, you don't even want to trade this middle section at all. Just sit on your hands. There's no reason to be in here. You see, it's just going to be chopping inside there. There's not, there's nothing with the linear regression anyway. So, um, and again, um, one last thing that I'll tell you that when you do get a signal, like right here, we would have gotten a signal that's breaking down the bands and it's below zero. So we're going to be firing shorts off. That does not mean to be selling the low. That means we should be waiting for it to come back and hit our averages or hit those prior highs. So you want to sell high and buy low. Traders lose because they always enter at the bottom. And what does price do when it gets down to the bottom? It goes right back to the top, right? And that's why we get stopped out because we're leaving little 10, st 10 tick stops and we're just crucifying ourselves. So when you get into a downtrend, we want to wait for price to move back to those averages. So we can either use um, a shorter time frame like the 714 high low. If you want to go short, set it to short. Top reversals is a good one. Uh, this will get you in on those top pullbacks. Or if you wanted to set it up for inflection short and just graduate down. So this is a great template to use in conjunction when you start getting your higher time frame printing all fours. Or even better, use that and use the high low one, I mean the high low two. So when it's in a downtrend, we want to wait for it to hit our supply demand zone. So we want to wait for these trigger threes or trigger fours. And that way we'll get the most bang for a buck. We can use those small, you know, 10, 15 tick stop losses and get the maximum reward for our trade. Um, another thing um, that I've requested, I did I mention that I've asked Jeremy to put that data series on Blackbird uh, so that we can use a Unirinko? So I can put in Blackbird, I want to use this higher time frame trend and the market entry on the lower time frame Unirinko. So I can use my Halo 1 or 2 on that lower time frame, um, hopefully, uh, if that'll work. 
I think this bar is going to require a bar close to be true, so I wouldn't be able to use the Unirinko, or the Hilo 2 with it. This requires a bar close to be false, but I could use the Hilo 1. So I could, if I can get Jeremy to do that, add the Unirinko bar type as a selection to execute the market order on the Unirinko, and we can, you know, decide if we want 714 or 1010 or 55 or whatever it is. We can select our bar size. So that would be really cool once the higher time frame condition is in place and it will execute on those lower time frames. Um, but right now, the way it's set up in Blackbird, I cannot do it. I tried putting, I did put the uh, smaller time frame Unirinko on the solver itself and tried running it through Blackbird like that, and it, and it um, did not work too well. I mean, it executed a trade, but it wasn't, um, you know, the timing was a little bit off. It was kind of funky. So I can't use it if it's a little bit off and funky. But this is not funky. This is not a little bit off. This is awesome. This is so cool. Uh, it allows me to see inside the trending condition and wait for those bands to start firing off all four. And that way I know to go to those bottoms and start hitting those bottoms each time it comes down here. I can put my own little you know, bottom envelope up, you know, with my, on my chart, and every time price comes down there and touches my level, I'm going to be firing off along. Mm -mm -mm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Likewise, um, selling the highs. So, for instance, it got up here, got to my uh, supply demand zone, the bottom of it came up to tag the second candle right here. I'm going to be shorting that one right there. And I'm not going to wait for the candle to close. I'm going to be hitting that top. Tuck a stop right there. Be hitting it all the way down there. Day trading 101. All right, guys, so um, I'll be distributing this on uh, Monday. I am very excited, so can't wait to, to incorporate it uh, going forward in the trade room. Um, and um, with a note on the trade room Friday, my apologies. Blackbird um, froze up on me several times, so I've separated out Hilo 2. I've got the triggers on one template now by themselves and I have a totally separate um, high low two that just has the fibs on it so we'll figure out if we want to trade fibs or triggers and um, set it up accordingly on separate blackbirds I think that'll make it um, not freeze up on me it was just too much and I think it's the fib indicator um, it's not the trigger indicator uh, it's the fib indicator that is sucking the memory. So there might be a memory leak in there or something. I'll have to ask Daniel about that um, when he gets to releasing this on version 8, if he can um, do some sort of a enhancement or modification to it so it's not dragging uh, Blackbird down. Thank you so much. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you next week. Take care.